All right, Gunner, we're good. Gunner, you still there? Sorry, now I should be there. There you are. Hey, and welcome everybody to the Mozilla Webmaker Weekly Community Call. It is great to see so many names perking up on the Ether pad on this day after a U.S. Labor Day holiday. Hope everybody's doing great. I draw your attention to line 67 where asynchronous distractions await, blog posts, press, and other weekly updates. Take a look at that when you're stuck on a conference call that's not packed with great content like today's call. And let's move our attention to line 77. We have a new team member to introduce and say hello to. Mariano, I wonder if you are with us and if you would be so kind as to hit star 7 and say hello and tell us what you might be going to be working on. Or if Mariano... I think maybe Mariano um, is going to join us at half past. Oh, okay, help. cool. Anybody else new on the call? Any other first timers that want to say hello and get a little bit of welcome hello. love? Hello, hey, who's me. that? Yeah. Is that Mariano? Yeah, that's me. That's trying the service. Excellent. Ah. Welcome. So, welcome yeah. to the call. Welcome to the team. Do you want to tell us a little bit about what you're going to be working on? Yeah. Uh, I'm going to talk about the media party. That's it. Uh, uh, do you want me to talk right now? Yeah, just if you want to just give us one or two sentences of what you'll be working on, that would be fantastic. Okay, I will be working on the, the Hacks Hackers Media Party, which is an event that we did uh, last weekend, and uh, I will be enjoying with you our event with 700 people that pass it through. Uh, the media party with journalists and hackers. Right on. Well, it's very good to have you with us, and we extend the warmest welcome. Thanks for joining. Bye. Anybody else new on the call? Otherwise, I will move us down to line 98. Dan Sinker, individual who is metaphysically blown backwards by his child's first day of school. Tell us how you're doing and what these Code Sprint grants are about. Yeah, hey there. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Excellent. Uh, so yeah, we, uh, we were actually at uh, Mariano's uh, Buenos Aires Media Party last week, and we were uh, lucky enough to be able to get up on stage and announce a brand new initiative with the Knight Mozilla Open News Project called Code Sprint Grants. Um, what Code Sprint Grants are are uh, something that we're hoping will kind of take the midpoint between uh, the hackers that we have been uh, working quite hard on this whole year, and uh, but our very kind of short, short-lived interactions uh, that create kind of short-term code, and uh, our fellowships, which are 10 months long and very long-term uh, interactions that create kind of much more uh, long-term uh, wide-scope code, um, where code sprint grants uh, fall is right in the middle. What we're doing is uh, there are $10,000 grants to create small uh, tools and utilities um, in uh, the journalism space. Uh, the way it's going to work is we're going to partner with news organizations. This is uh, also widening the uh, partnership between news orgs that we work with. Um, but partner with news organizations to kind of uh, define, um, define some problems that are, are repeatable across news orgs um, and are also easily definable uh, to create uh, pieces of code that will then be open source. Uh, and uh, hopefully be able to be used broadly across uh, a number of journalism organizations. So the idea is really uh, things at the utility level, not at the storytelling level, uh, but hopefully utilities that will allow for all sorts of cool stories to be told. So uh, that's kind of the, the idea behind it. Uh, it is uh, open now. We have at mozillaopennews.org slash codesprints.html. Um, we have uh, my voice is pixelating. I just heard. Um, sorry about that. Um, is that better? Yeah, you're coming through fine now. Oh, okay. Um, 
so yeah, uh, they are open now at mozillaopennews.org slash codesprints.html. Uh, the initial application, obviously there's quite a bit of conversation between us and a partner uh, on this thing, but the initial application is really quite short. Um, we're looking for news organizations from all over the world and all sorts of different sizes to uh, engage in, in what we're doing. That's great. Thanks, man. Um, so uh, taking a look if you want, actually no, there's no questions here currently. Anybody have questions for Dan? Dan, have you heard from people yet? Have people already applied or is it still way that early? Uh, we announced it Friday, uh, Friday morning, Buenos Aires time, so quite early uh, U.S. time. Uh, and we've already, I believe, gotten three applications in, so um, including one within the first hour of announcing. It was like somebody was sitting there waiting, wishing that something like this would come along, and, and already had all the answers already uh, filled out. So, uh, yeah, and this is a this is an ongoing rolling initiative. There is no deadline on it. It's uh, something that we'll be doing over the course of the next year. Right on. Very very cool. Anybody else have questions? What's the deadline for applying? There isn't one. No other questions? Very cool. Well, Dan, this is exciting. Congratulations on launching a cool new giveaway. Thanks a lot. Thank you, sir. All right. Let us move to line 119, Webmaker User Stories Peer Assist. Jess, have you hit star 7, and are you now audibly with us? Jess is not yet audibly with us. Jess, are you struggling to hit star seven or in a different – there you are. Welcome. <laughs> yes, I'm just slow on my star sevening. Um, <laughs> so right now we are working towards creating a, our cohesive webmaker offering, which includes everything from uh, user experience design to designing um, integrated features like badges across all of our tools. And, um, as we started to dive into this and review the assets and products that are currently launched, it's become clear that we need to do a deeper dive into our audience definition for WebMaker, um, for WebMaker P, which includes like the WebMaker website as well as the associated properties like popcorn and symbol and goggles. So, um, and I should say, and Hive and, and Open News. And so I think that what we I'm trying to find the line that I'm supposed to be referring everybody to right this second on the ether pad. So if somebody gets to this before me, shout it out. <laughs> line 121? Uh, yes. Yeah. So if anyone can take a look at line 121 and click on the link to the WebMaker user stories ether pad, that would be awesome. So the thinking here is that creating user stories based on our experiences working with our various constituents is going to allow us to define our target audience and inform our decisions about um, user experience and the information architecture. And so the learning team, we took a first stab at this exercise, and that helped us to produce basically five general categories. Youth, which includes basically teenagers. Instructors, which includes formal and informal educators, lifelong learners, which for those of you who are not versed in the term, that's adults, and um, pragmatic consumers, so there's like somebody who comes, just wants to work on popcorn or just wants to get information about um, something at an open news event. Or, um, and then we have site visitors, so somebody who might have gone to the Firefox or, um, website and clicked on the Mozilla tab in the upper right-hand corner and found WebMaker. And so basically right now I have two asks. The first is can everybody take a look at this document and tell us, tell us if there's anything missing. Go right ahead and add, add in your user stories that might be missing. And feel free to add categories if we are missing categories. And then the second, the second ask is right now um, we don't have a separate user story for contributors because we're starting to think of having touch points of contribution distributed throughout everything. So for example, you would be able to contribute, uh, contribute your own project automatically when you go onto another project page, there's going to be an access point for something like that, or learn how to teach a project directly from that page. And I'm sure my terminology is wrong around this, but I'm just trying to communicate the idea. And I'm, I'm just wondering, is this how we should be thinking about it? 
Somebody in turquoise said yes and. Is that Matt? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I guess um, I, I think this is great work, Jess. Like, I'm excited to see the stories fleshed out. I think that the idea of having contribution like baked into everything totally makes uh, sense. At the same time, I just think it'd be cool to see a story where somebody goes from being like one of the members of these other groups, like up a ladder of engagement into into being more of a contributor. That's interesting. So, I mean, would you are you saying something more like um, someone who comes to the website to, to like webmaker.org and they want to go directly to like a contributor section and learn how to contribute through through you know a series of steps, or are you saying something other than that? No, it could be like that, or it could be like you start out as a user and then you get bitten by the webmaker bug and become a maker, and then you want to go deeper um, and contribute in a sort of more engaged way. I just think it'd be cool to see a narrative that kind of outlines that process, and also maybe help us identify gaps on the site where it's hard to, to kind of go from being like a webmaker.org user to being a contributor right now. Great. So there is. Uh I think the second version of what we just said is is the idea that it's you know integrated throughout everything. I think the first version of what we said is a little different. I think it's definitely worth exploring, but just acknowledging that they're different ways of treating the user, a user. Cool. That's, that's great. Those things. So, hey, Jess, this is Carla. I also think there's an opportunity just to address what Matt was just saying, was that I think that we're also looking at ways that people can kind of move up and provide content overall, and definitely coming from the project standpoint and feeding outward. And we are having conversations about what are the, what are the methods that that disperses kind of outward from projects and even leading to things like badges. So those, those are questions we're actually considering, um, but we're not ready to kind of uh, move forward with it, but it, we're, we're thinking long term about potential areas of interaction. Great, and I, I think actually we talked, I know Carla and I, we've talked about this, but it'd be good actually for us to add this into our user stories so that so that we're constantly thinking about them, thinking about the dream. I think also to keep in mind just as you're designing, you're writing your user story, just to be as specific as possible because. I see somebody here wrote in, uh, wrote in. <laughs> somebody here wrote uh, that we need to break down youth into younger kids and teens. And I, I think that's right and, and maybe not right. But I think whoever, we should just say specifically what we're thinking about when we say youth. Are we talking about teenagers? Are we talking about five year olds? Who are we talking about? Because I think the more specific we are, it'll be easier for us to design around those kinds of constraints. So, and a quick question about Jess about why you chose the term pragmatic consumers rather than just consumers. I love uh, Sunny. I think Sunny keeps up with to speak more specific on that term, but really just someone who is more of a consumer, someone who comes with a specific idea. So they're coming to WebMaker with a specific vision of specific information that they're trying to come to, and they think they have not get out of it. You have a better term for that, sure. <laughs> Right on. Any other questions or feedback for Jess? This really is exciting stuff. And Jess, just for the record, if you do any more speaking, you'll want to be closer to your mic because it sounded like you were breaking up as you got farther away from your mic. Noted. I'm now close. Excellent. You sound close. Right on. Any other feedback before we move on to item the next? Very cool. Well, thanks everybody, and Jessica, we can't wait to see where this one goes. As the note on 144 says, glad we are doing this. I am in user story giddy heaven. All right. <clears throat> Let us turn our attention to line 150 in the Etherpad. User testing, Kate H., can you operate star 7 and become among the audible? All right. I think you guys can hear me, right, loud enough? We, we can. We can absolutely hear you. 
Okay, perfect. Uh, so we actually did some user testing last week with the whole popcorn team, um, and it was super successful. So I just wanted to share some of you know the process we used um, and some of the stuff we found out. So I won't I won't say everything that we did, but uh, basically we we sort of did a call out to people in the Toronto area to come into the office, and uh, we wrote a user testing script that focused on different elements of our interface and uh, tested what we thought uh, would be easy and what wouldn't be easy. And we got a, real, a lot of really, really good information back. So uh, you can check out the script that I actually wrote. Um, I put the Dropbox link there. Um, uh, I am going to write a blog post about the specific steps that we use, so hopefully we can repeat them and do them again. Um, and yeah, I'd, I'd love to be able to do more user testing in the future um, and kind of have a, a process that we you know, use more often in the office to actually user test our products. So yeah, it was super successful, I thought. Um, yeah. What's the biggest thing that you felt like you learned from the process? Um, I guess one thing we learned a lot about was what kind of health documentation we needed for popcorn. Uh, we realized that we'd have to have some built-in uh, sort of first impression tool tips and stuff like that for uh, the app, as well as some information that would work better in a wiki or something like that. So we got some really, really good feedback, specific feedback about how to do our help docs or um, the first steps for people to use popcorn. Um, yeah, and then just really simple things like you know we have to use the enter key on our inputs. We just sort of overlooked that without having using it ourselves. So um, because we saw everybody in our user testing session do that, it was a really quick fix that um, you know we can now implement. So yeah, very useful. So are there any cool. questions? Uh, Okay, so we sort of had um, a different kinds of, the, the question is, was this try to use this or uh, this is how you use it. Um, we had different kinds of tasks for people to do. So we got people to actually try things on a first impression basis. So just, you know, what do you think the way to add an event is? And then they try to do it. Uh, and then we also had more structured um, kind of scenarios for people to do as well after they were more familiar with the app. So. We tried to fit in a whole bunch of different kinds of tasks and um, different, so we would get different kinds of information. Um, and you can look at that Dropbox link to see it sort of broken into the different kinds of tasks. Um, yeah. And is there anything else? Yeah, user testing kit would be super awesome. And uh, I'm sure, you know, with all the stuff that Jess is doing, we're going to work out a more comprehensive strategy for that um, as we continue to work on it. And do you guys have some ideas on how you might like to do this more often? Or is that pending for your blog post? Yeah, I, I'd love to be able to actually do this in the office on a relatively regular basis. Like may, pro probably every week um, would not be anywhere near feasible since it's totally exhausting. But um, it would be great to actually, you know, uh, once a month or once every two months to have a session where people can just come in um, do, you know, try out something, you know, a, a targeted, you know, um, one of our apps um, and get some feedback from that. So to have kind of a, a repeated culture of user testing that happens in the office. I would love to see that. And yeah. this is Brett. Uh, um, so we, as uh, Kate said, this was actually a pretty good process for our team. But I also noticed that um, people who were doing it seemed to like it. Um, we did. <laughs> we offered them some incentive, but I irrespective of that, um, people seem to kind of dig being in on this sort of early version of software. So w one of the things that we were thinking and we discussed is this would actually be a pretty um, easy win. Well, I shouldn't say easy, but it would be a big win in terms of contributors that if we had kind of a web maker or you know, MoFo software team um, contributor pool of beta testers. And I, I don't think we would have to set up something super complicated to do this, um, but it seems like it could be a really um, nice way to get a lot of the people, like people that are on this call for instance, um, that know that they want to participate but may not have you know, the time to write code or the skill or inclination to do that. 
Um, but using the software is like actually one of the most uh, useful and um, yeah, the most useful things that contributors can do for us. So it, it it really made me think that we ought to do that. We really ought to figure out some process that we're um, gathering people's feedback and encouraging them to do that and rewarding them and all of that. So um, I wanted to propose that we maybe find some forum to talk about that or, and figure that out. And I don't know if Michelle Lebeck is on the call, but I know you're. Thinking about those sorts of things, so perhaps that would be, um, you know, something good in the future for us to for us to do. Yeah. And the way we tried to word it um, with our flyer and just the the script and the way we approach people, um, we sort of tried to encourage people to consider themselves an important part of the team and the process almost. So um, we communicated as something very valuable to us, and that they were, you know, not just silly users; that they were experts about using. So. Um, I think people really responded to that as well. Word. And also, um, in case folks missed it, on 150, line 154, that's the, that link that says test link, that's what Popcorn Maker looks like right now, which is pretty radically different than a lot of people have seen it lately. So you can kick the tires on that if you want. Yeah. Still lots of bugs, but lots tell bugs. us about them. Excellent. Very beautiful. Leadership by example in the user testing arena. So yeah, congratulations and super excited to see all the energy happening in the, uh, the chat channel. Um, let's see if there's anything else coming in in the line 180s, but this is uh, super cool. Somebody want to say something? Excellent. Well, I love this user testing Friday's vision. I do hope that comes to pass. And, uh, that we can make it a federated global phenomenon. Okay, I think it is time to move forward in the agenda. Line 193, Open Badges, latest partnership announcements. Sunny, could you unmute yourself and tell us about this combination of brown and light purple? Hi, everybody. Um, so we have a couple partnership announcements. Code School has integrated with the OBI and it's made an announcement on their blog. Um, you might be familiar with Code School. They made some publicity a few months ago with their GitHub course that they created. Um, make sure to check out the blog post linked in line 180. Uh, I think it's now 194. Um, they've installed open badges on all their courses. You can also push badges previously earned into your backpack as well, which is super cool. Um, in addition, Jeff is also working with the folks at Code School for um, a WebMaker project, so we're extending our relationship with Code School to WebMaker as well. In addition to Code School, um, Purdue University is now integrating with Open Badges uh, OBI as well. Um, it's worth noting that they're the first university to integrate with the OBI at a university level not just on a one-off class level. Previously, we've had really forward-thinking professors like David Wiley from Brigham Young University and Alex Halliday, previously with Quinnipiac and now with Arizona State University, issued badges to their students um, and their classes. But that was done just kind of like on an individual class or independent professor level. This is the first time badges are being issued at a university-wide level. So it's pretty exciting. Um, they're going to push out their beta version of their LMS their, le their learning management system that integrates that issues badges and integrates with the OBI. I think in, an, in about a week or two, and around that um, they'll have some press release and Matt is looped in with regards to the communication. Um, uh, I just wanted, in addition to a couple of these two um, partnership announcements, I also wanted to share some of the latest stats. Um, as of today, we have 192 independent issuers that are integrating with the Open Badge infrastructure, um, and approximately 13,600 um, badges and counting issued into the OBI to date. So we're making a lot of great progress, and we'll continue on with this momentum. Um, I have to make I have to do a shout out to the team: Chris McAvoy, Brian Brennan, Mike Larson, Aaron Knight, Carla Casilli have worked tirelessly for this. And um, yeah, that's it. Um, on line 209, I connected with the folks at Team Treehouse yet again, and this looks like it will get kickstarted. Oh, awesome, Carla, that's great. Um, 
And then questions regarding Purdue University on line 213. Will the badges count towards university credit? Um, I think, yes, they will count towards university credit. Um, the way they're, um, they're basically allowing their profess the professors to create badges and issue them to their students. And I think they will aggregate and uh, contribute to um, a uh, the evaluation of a student's performance leading to course credit. Any other questions? Thank you. Right on. Thank you, Sunny. Very, very exciting. All right. Rumor has it that there's a festival in London sometime this year that Michelle is doing something with. Michelle, do you want to tell us about this Mozilla Festival and this rumored website that might soon be findable? Over to you, Michelle Thorne and Ross. Yeah, this um, alleged festival now has even an alleged website that is viewable to the public. Um, if you check out the link, um, the Etherpad died on me, but I think it's on line 220. Um, we have the a Etherpad testing. is very dead. Etherpad's dead. So if you are putting it in manually, it's a short URL. Um, I welcome you to try it out now. Um, it's off the tweet. Um, it's just for um, previewing with the with the community and doing some. Uh, you know, quality control. But um, the URL is festival.mozillalabs, L-A-B-S as one word, dot com. So festival.mozillalabs.com. Um, and definitely welcome you to have a peek. Um, this is the part of the hard labor of, um, of Andrew and Ross and Chris for the designs. Um, and we're really proud of it. And we want to be even prouder by squashing lots of bugs and fixing silly typos. So um, if you have a moment to, to take a look and to give feedback, we have a ticket tracker, which is now not viewable, I think, in the Etherpad. Um, but um, you can email some of us or just tweet us and let us know if you see mistakes. And um, we're really proud of it, and hopefully are able to launch it widely to the world by the end of the week. Ross, anything else we should say? I take that to mean no. Yeah, I would just big shout out to Ross and Andrew and just the whole team that's put this site together because you know with all the different things they're juggling, I just think it's really incredible that they've got such a tight site ready for review. And Michelle, congratulations on all your leadership shepherding the cats and other mammals forward into a coherent public-facing web presence. Woohoo! Yeah, Hello good there. stuff. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Hi, this is Rebecca. Um, I just wanted to let you know that I've got a backup of the uh, Etherpad. It's uh, a link that I just added to Foundation on IRC. Um, I grabbed it before we all started adding to it during the call, but there is a basic outline of all these things that you added just as the call started there. Thanks, Rebecca. Thanks so much, Rebecca. All right, so um, I'm not at that Etherpad yet. Um, can I get some assist on what might theoretically be next in the agenda? Anybody know? Was anyone expecting to talk? Were people hoping we'd get done early? Did anything I just say trigger a round I, of thinking? I was supposed to be the next in the agenda, Mariano from Buenos Aires. Mariano, welcome back. Welcome back. Okay. Well, thank you for giving us some scaffolding to hang this conversation on. Can you just go ahead and tell us what's up in your neck of the woods? Okay. Uh, as far as, as I look uh, blind without the interface, anyway, I I can uh, tweet the address of the of the event that where we have been holding this weekend in Buenos Aires. I'm not sure which is the hashtag that you use. Maybe I can share the the link of the of the website of the event so you can check what I'm talking about. That sounds great. Um, and if you want to say it, I'll try typing it into the to some of the IRC channels I'm on. Okay. Is it is it, is it so, audible? Can you say it, or does it have like all kinds of weird hashed values in it? Uh. Anyway. Mediaparty.hhba.info? That, that's it. Yeah, that's it. Cool. Mediaparty.hhba.info. 
Yeah, so media party, all one word, M E D I A P A R T Y dot H H as in Harry, Harry B A, H H B A dot info, I N F O. Yeah, so uh, just uh, I give you a little background. I am a Hack Suckers when I say this uh, founder. Um, we started this chapter in April to 2011. Uh, and uh, we started to think in a big event in actually when we went to Mozilla Festival in London we said we can do something like this and uh, we worked like six months and this weekend we have uh, the biggest hack hackers uh, uh, event ever with about 700 participants during three days and uh, a lot of people from the journalist community and uh, from the uh, hacker community. Uh, the third day, we held a hackathon with 250 people. And uh, so we are very excited to have Dan Sinker in Buenos Aires, but also people from the, the Guardian, the New York Times, uh, ProPublica, other projects funded by Knight Foundation. So uh, we are now, uh, became the, the second largest uh, hack hackers meetup in the world, which is great, and a lot of people is thinking about content in different ways right now. Thanks to the thanks to the party, thanks to the support of the Mozilla Foundation, but mostly thanks for the trust and the people that work here, which are a lot of volunteers, people who knew each other through Twitter, and uh, now we are working on uh, collect all the information. We have eight. Uh, projects in a hackathon. Uh, we build a dashboard for a hackathon also for the event, uh, which is obviously open source and can be used for any other hackathon in the world. And so, well, this is what we've done. <clears throat> and also, I will, I, I had a, a link for a big picture with all of us in this term. I, I'm not sure it's going to come back, sorry. So uh, we encourage journalists and developers to think on content in different ways. And uh, everybody is very, very happy of what happened here, coordinating this big event where about 60, 70 people worked and 700 passed uh, in the three days. So uh, we expect also that some of the projects get kind of consideration from my foundation if, if they are interested. Um, so it's, we think that it's a, it's, a, it's a real beginning of the journalism and tech geek community here in Buenos Aires. That's so great. That's, Thank, that's you. Thank you. Yeah. And, uh, and what, is, well, what lies ahead? Sorry? What is next? What is next? Well, uh, as this is a big event, I think that the next step is to do a small event <laughs> to uh, concentrate on local chapters. And uh, maybe the, the, the next uh, step is to try to find some funding for the for the project for the people who've been working like one year on development tools. And we have like four or five uh, tools that uh, we sought for. Uh, solve problem for journalism. Well, maybe the biggest project is a data mining system that we call MAP76, which is MAP76. It's a data mining system to extract, analyze, and visualize information from documents uh, to understand connection between large volumes of documents. Um, maybe the next time will be also to go to the Mozilla Festival in London. So that's it. Uh, thank you very much for your time. And I hope that when the Tupad came back, you can check the links and the projects that we started in the or passed through our hackathon. Right on. Fantastic. And thank you so much. That is really great report back and very exciting news. And we do hope to see you in London in November. Mm. Well, if someone wants to ask a question, it's okay. Yeah, are there any questions, any feedback? Any first-hand reports of people who were there? 
Mariano, I have a question. I really like the Hackdash dashboard that you set up. It seems like a great way for people at the Hackathon to kind of share what they were working on. Could you just say a little bit more mm -hmm. about how you set that up and um, whether you think it's something that we might um, look at for the festival? Uh, I, I'm not sure about your word was a little noisy, but uh, can you repeat the question? Oh, sorry. I'm just looking at the um, dashboard that you set up for the Hackathon. Hackdash.hhba.info. Yes. Just wondering if you could yes. say more about how, how you um, created that and whether you felt like it worked well, because it seems like a good way for a bunch of people to share what they're working on in a distributed way. Yeah, so the idea came up uh, to me when we were organizing this big event. We say we all, you usually have problems to track ideas in a hackathon uh, and uh, mostly in this big event where like eight, ten projects working parallel. So we, I sent the idea to Twitter and some developers say, I, I, I'm a journalist, so I, I'm, uh, I can talk with developers, but I'm not a developer. And some developers say, I, I want to join this idea. So I said, what was my idea? Then we worked in houses at night, and we uh, showed up with this with little tool that helps you to organize ideas and people. It's, it's the only thing that it does, it organizes ideas and people. Uh, so when the funny is that we, we use that for tracking ideas. Uh, we think that we have to improve some, some, some things that we need to make uh, work it better to organize when the hackathon uh, has begun. Uh, but the funny thing is that other developers arrived to the hackathon with the idea to work in the Hackdash more than other projects. So uh, we have uh, suddenly three or four developers working on on this idea because everybody has problems with how to organize ideas during a hackathon. So we are working to improve improve this uh, this tool to to make that to work better in the process of a hackathon because all the ideas there are, are just for before the hackathon, but now are also for a, uh, we, we have to change the state so when the hackathon is uh, starting, developing, or ending. And uh, we have other ideas to organize information visually to, to track if we need more skills from developers in a team or for journalists in another team. So uh, that's a, a good way to understand how this community works here, like anyone can take another idea and make it work where it works better. Anyway, it is on uh, GitHub and it's, it's free to use and to install and you have instructions there. Cool, thank you. Well, bye. Right on. Thank you so much, Mariano. Very appreciated. All right. Thank you. Next agenda item. Somebody want to queue me up. I'm still not seeing data on my screen, but that's probably just because I'm confused. I think we've actually reached the end of the agenda, um, Gunnar. There's just uh, a non couple nonverbal updates um, that we can just tweet out after the call. Excellent. Well, this has been a super efficient weekly call then. Anybody else have any orders of business they would like to bring to the floor before we wrap things up? Very good. Well, we are looking forward to seeing a lot of folks in Toronto at the All Hands meeting next week, and we hope everybody has a fantastic first week of September. Thanks, everybody, for being on the weekly WebMaker call, and we'll talk to you real soon. Bye-bye. Bye, Gunner. Bye, Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Please stand by.